Hi everyone, so for now, I'm going to teach you how to create a double dead end uh, configuration for transmission lines that is connected directly on the pole. So first, what we're going to do is create a new file. And now, uh, general data first, and then you have to name this project. So, double dead end on pole. So, this will do for now. Voltage maybe 30. So, okay. And then, you uh, could. Uh, Put a sample pole here. So we already have a material for the wood pole, so we don't have to edit. And then for the geometry, this is the part where we're going to insert the wood pole in the workspace. So P, name this at P. And then we'll use this one. Oh, it's SP. There's nothing, see, so we have to change the name. Yeah, maybe that will do. And then hardwood, okay. So if we're If you're go going to make a configuration like this, you have to make two holes, one for these two and one for this. So, uh, let's say double dead end one, maybe around 25 meters from the top, and then DD2. I know. Uh, this will be for the post insulator already. Uh, you could do with this a bit by point seven. This will do. This is not a push brace. This will be fixed. So now we have the pole here. So you can see. So now, going to insert the double strain insulators. So we go to geometry, insulators, and then strain. So let's name the first one to be double dead one. So we already have for this structure attached, this is the part where we're going to choose which hole that so for a while ago we uh, inserted double dead end and PI. These are the two holes that we inserted and this is the top. So we cannot use this because uh, we cannot put a hole on the top. So we're going to use this, the one that we did earlier. And we're going to label this as DD1. So we already have a sample property here. Let's just use this. So azimuth is the rotation of the hole, so we don't need to put in anything there. And then for this uplift, there would be no limit because it is a strain insulator. So next, DD2. Because this is a this is the second strain insulator, so the same structure attached, the same hole, in other words, and then we're going to label this as DD2, the same property. But the azimuth, we have to rotate this by 180 degrees and put this to no limit. 
So I pressed OK already. Sorry, I went by too fast. So this is the two strain insulators. So now you have to insert the post insulator. So geometry insulators, strain insulators. So we label this as PI and then this one, this is the hole and then PI. Nah, I'm sorry, this is wrong. Geometry insulators, post insulator. This is the correct. So, post label, PI, structure attached, that the VI, we would name this as PI, and then property. So, we have this horizontal suspension now. This one. Oh, for this one, we have to create. So, so you can see here is quite too long. It's not visible. So, uh, maybe this would be a good exercise. So, for us to see this first, let's try to see what's going to happen. So no uplift because this is a post insulator. So we'll just try to see this first and see what happened. So as you can see here, we have the correct configuration. So just the incorrect type of post insulator. So in other other things, so it is attached correctly. It is attached 90 degrees from the two strain insulators, so we have to create. So how are we gonna do that? Let's check for the components and then insulators and then post in post properties. So this is the one that we used. So let's try to mimic this and tweak a little bit so that it will match the have example that we have. So. Let's just name this to HP2. And then this has no brace, so horizontal projection. So this that's why the post insulator a while ago is very long because the horizontal projection is two meters. So we can make this to 0.5. So next horizontal pro vertical projection. Uh, this one, as you can see here, it's a little bit tilted upward. That is because we, uh, the property has negative 0 0.285. So negative, so it will be directed up upwards. So for now, we're not going to have any of that. Uh, and then for the weight, we can just uh, make it. 25% of the original direction capacity. So we won't need this. But if your client has the data, you can insert it there. So what is in there? So longitudinal capacity, transverse capacity, and vertical capacity of the post insulator. So, okay. Cantilever capacity. Maybe make this 25% as well, around. And that will do. Maybe this is. Uh, I just estimated this because we don't have a data sheet. But uh, if, for example, you have a project and then uh, 
uh, you have data sheet for this component for these factors you will need to insert all of them here so we don't need this one hardware capacity draw sheds so for now this will do after we created the post insulator it's not yet in here because we did not insert it yet so we'll go to geometry insulators post insulators so we will change this one to the one that we made as you can see hp2 this is the one that we made earlier so the rest would be the same the label the attachment point the tip label the azimuth and the no uplift so as you can see here it has become a little bit shorter or a lot shorter than earlier so it's a lot more feasible and more uh, similar to this one for this example so if you're going to insert it to PLS CAD you're just gonna have to save it so maybe on the desktop so post insulator and save it and you're just gonna have to open it so that's it you're just gonna have to load this uh, using the structure modify and i'm going to show you on the next video so thank you so much.